Hi all, I have another instructive, amazing game to show you. So Stockfish 9 against Leela ID 11250. This is a game from David Grosvenor. So the Fast and Furious time control of 40 moves per two minutes with a two second increment per move. The opening set, E4, E6, Leela is forced to play the French defense. And this is the end of the book. Stockfish 9 chooses E takes D5 on this occasion. So this has a very drawish reputation. It's very difficult, usually, to play a win, play for a win with the black pieces because of the symmetrical pawn structure. Only one shared file. So this one shared file is the only thing going on. Uh, <laughs> uh, so let's see what can Leela do with this. We have Knight F3, Knight F6, Bishop D3, Bishop D6. So totally symmetrical at the moment. Nothing can possibly uh, be dangerous here for either side, surely. We have knight c3 being played. Now, in chess based live book in this very dull position, knight e5 has been seen before with a bit of interest for trying to undermine the knight, this position. And here, queen c7 uh, is apparently the top move in human books. Uh, Stockfish 9 prefers knight c6 almost as if black might potentially be better but it's not really the case if we look at this situation it should be equal there's nothing really to write home about it should be an even position so anyway knight c3 seems a bit on the artificial side because it is blocking in the c pawn but the tactical threat knight b5 may have been of interest here bishop g4 and we have knight b5 uh, bishop g5 has been played before in a game uh, Favarandian, Favandian against Aaron Summerskull, who's a British grandmaster. That ended in a draw on move 48. So that's in the pinned comment of this video if you want to check it out. Bishop g5 from this position. But knight b5 was chosen by Stockfish. Rook e8. We have now, yeah, the bishop offered up on a plate. And actually, Stockfish didn't take it here. Uh, c3 was played instead and uh, let's have a look knight takes d6 isn't this good to grab the bishop pair because this is thought to be uh, a strong thing the bishop pair generally so why not well let's have a look queen takes d6 this looks to be just an even position it seems for the dark square bishop coming off the board for that knight black has a grip on the light squares here which should be sufficient uh, okay, the move bishop e3 has been seen before as well, by the way, in a high level game, uh, at least in ICCF email correspondence game. Uh, very, very strong players. Bishop e3 has been seen. It ended in the draw. Surprise, surprise. Move 29. So, anyway, c3, bishop f8. So the bishop is preserved. Bishop f4 hitting c7. Is this a nuisance? Knight a6, awkward knight. Is it ever going to get back into the game? Is Leela playing with fire? Uh, I know, she's not playing with fire, she's playing with stockfish. <laughs> okay, anyway, so knight a3. Threatening structural damage. Does the knight have to go back to b8? Or actually, Leela plays c6, offering structural damage on a plate again. And this plate is rejected again by stockfish playing knight c2 it seems again you know bishop takes a6 really serves to weaken white on the light square so even though there's what seems to be structural dicing it doesn't seem to be that big a deal in the bigger context here so knight c2 just ignoring that pesky knight bishop h5 perhaps getting away from knight e3 in advance keeping that pin Rookie one, knight e4, queen c1, and the knight stumbles back towards the center with a vengeance. It's got a tempo target, f4 potentially. Knight d2, there's no point taking off this knight here, it seems. Uh, if bishop takes c7, there's really, there's no real outcome here for white. On knight e5, for example, actually f6 is then possible, and black actually gets into a very, very nice position with the bishop pair against the two knights so knight d2 here we have bishop g6 a4 knight e6 and it's here that actually white ends up after bishop e5 in a situation transitioning 
into a, a couple of bishops versus a couple of knights scenario. The, the bishop pair versus a knight pair. Believe it or not. Uh, if bishop g3, then it seems there's, there can be a lot of exchanges like this, for example. But are they actually a big deal? If black tries to be really ruthlessly attacking here on the h file, for example, this is a fictional line. It seems as though even this is not enough for any advantage of the king. Find the king's not bothered going to e2 here if, if there's a check. So this is actually dynamically equal position. Uh, so there's nothing, yeah, it seems very hard to get an advantage. But knight c5 now is played, hitting the bishop. So that, this is a very clever looking tactical move at the service of strategy. D takes c5 was played. If bishop f1, if the bishop retreated to f1, then knight takes d2 and then knight b3 forks the queen and the rook here. So that is not on. Okay. So d takes c5 so one bishop goes and in fact the other bishop goes so why is stockfish interested in giving up both bishops here are there blockading opportunities and in fact c5 has to be protected now with b4 leaving maybe this diagonal a bit weaker rook e8 knight c4 so are the knights really quite dangerous here versus the bishops this bishop in particular would seem a potentially uh, a problem piece just hemmed in by its own pawn uh, but okay so f5 was played which does give a reverse gear uh, for the bishop to come to f7 if needed looking at this diagonal okay so rook d1 queen f6 uh, so hitting that c3 yeah is this an issue or is the queen going to be trapped? In fact, a5 is played casually, letting the queen in for dinner to take c3, but it's not taken. Leela plays f4. If she had taken on c3, then rook d4 keeps the queen in a prison here, and then there's rook a3 on the cards here. This is very nasty. Uh, so rook a3, you know, would trap the queen there. Uh, so let's see. So f4 makes a big, a huge difference, actually, what's played here. Or potentially, sorry, rook a d8 first. Uh, has to be looked at as well. So uh, Let's go back, actually. a5. So Leela didn't take on c3. There is a line. Let me just show you this line, though. Sorry. Let me just show you this line. So rook a3 is threatened. In fact, rook a d8 tactically, even with the queen trapped here, there's a queen sack, which seems to offer an even position, dynamically balanced, funny enough. But anyway, stronger f4. So this provides e3 for hitting c2. The bishop's being liberated here. This bishop isn't so bad. Uh, and we have rook d4. The tempting a6 to try and undermine the queen side pawns doesn't seem too effectual. Black, after taking on c3, it's hitting the knight. It looks nasty with e3 coming, so that doesn't look at all good. h3 here, uh, we can see this queen trap is not working at all because of e3 now hitting the c2 knight. So there's no rook a3. Okay, so okay, rook d4 now. So not playing a6, shielding c3 with a6 still on the cards. So is this a problem? Rook a d8. A6 now is just invited. Leela invites this. B takes. So structural damage really invited here. So it's trying to celebrate this bishop here, not minding, it seems, about structure on the queen side so much now. Knight d4, shielding that c3 pawn again. Uh, yeah, taking on a6 is, is far too dangerous here. Taking on c3 hits the knight. For example, here, just take the knight. Yeah, it's. Something's got to be done about that again. So knight d4. And we have bishop f7. Look at these bishops together. And look at the knights together. The bishop eyeing that c4 knight now. Queen f1. But here we have an emergence of a huge positional asset. So offering the a6 pawn. And look at the dicing of these pawns. All three of these pawns seem to be very diced. But what is Leela getting in this trade in this transaction trade 
after rook takes a6. Well, it's a big protected pass pawn after e3, even letting c6 go. It's a very, very big central protected pass pawn in particular that's emerging here. And in fact, it's already showing its great dangers. So white play rook takes c6. If f takes e3 here, then this pawn, even with the queens coming off, threatening e2, and look, because the knight's hanging on c4 here, this is just too much to bear. White would have to give up a piece. It's a lost position. So we have rook takes c6 instead. And now, yes, the big protected pass pawn is installed, hitting the queen with tempo. So no time to, for rook takes f6, because then we just take on f1 with check. Uh, so if uh, so after e2, yeah, if rook takes f6, sorry, queen e1 was played anyway. Okay, let's go with queen e1. Anyway, you get that. E, e takes f1 is check. So queen e1. And uh, now we have queen g5. So look at this position. It's very, very dangerous. Uh, if knight takes, then queen takes c6. So queen e1. It's a very, very bad blockader of this central protected pass pawn. Queen g5 is played now. So now bishop takes c4 is threatened. The knight retreats. So how is this actually effectual in this position and it turns out in this position Lila celebrates the protected pass pawn by trying to get basically another pass pawn can you see what is played here if I give you five seconds so black to play how would you try and do something in this position okay a5 was played by the way, although it, it does seem tempting to play a move like bishop d5, but I think it's sufficient to actually defend g2 here. It looks like the rook and, uh, and g2, but it looks sufficient to play a move like knight f3. So, um, <laughs> yeah, hit, hitting the queen, hitting the queen, and then moving the rook after. Okay, so a5 is more of a consideration to get another pass pawn, basically. We have knight f3 here hitting the queen. On b takes, then bishop takes c5 is very nice. For example, this scenario is very powerful. Uh, the knights, both probed by the bishops in this scenario, is fascinating. There's just too much pressure with the loose rook on c6 as well. Far too much pressure, far too many issues. Uh, just to give an example, a simple example, this is a disaster with the c6 rook hanging. It's very, very tricky for white. It's too tricky. So knight to f3, queen goes back to d8. We have h4. Yeah, on b takes a5 here, then simply queen takes a5. It is very, very nice. c5 is going to drop. Very, very nice for black. So h4, bishop c4 protecting that pawn. Uh, now, rook b6, a4, so another pass pawn is thrown at stockfish. And note the bishop is also stopping any rook a6 getting behind that pawn. Knight d2, the bishop d3. Yeah, white's again in a position which seems pretty devoid of much counterplay. Knight e6, queen c8, knight takes f8. And in here, it's so strong, these pass pawns, that it doesn't even bother recapturing. She just plays h she just plays a3 <laughs> with the idea of a2, a1, and then queening this one after the queen takes a1. King takes f8 was, was good, though, actually, as well. For example, this, it's still strong, this position. This is still going to be very, very good for black, this scenario. Black's got a big advantage there. And on rook takes f8 instead. Again, this is a strong scenario <laughs> for black. Yeah, black's really... Uh, in the driving seat here in these variations. Okay, so a3, knight takes h7, and uh, 
we have king takes now knight f3 a2 it's just too much two big pass pawns here b5 is played on king h2 in fact this one can be driven home potentially with queen a8 for, for a1 yep it's too much so we have uh, b5 this looks like a very desperate position now b5 is a desperate looking move queen takes c5 so the, the only idea is to try and get the rook behind the pawn interfering with that diagonal uh, so that was the idea it seems of playing uh, that b5 okay so now bishop c4 protects the a2 pawn it's absolutely a winning position knight d4 f3 reinforcing again the protected e2 pawn pass pawn now g3 is played very timid just accepting a kind of defeat a mini defeat there it looks incredibly strong what happens say knight takes f3 then queen takes b5 this is just winning after rook d8 threatening things like rook d1 now so that's that's huge and on g takes f3 instead then queen h5 does a lot of damage here white's just helpless in this position <laughs> the queen's just consigned as a blockader here and the black queen has got a free hand that loses the rook so what does white actually do here if, if the pawn can't be pushed just just waits to get uh checkmated here it seems you know black's going to swing a rook in with rookie five yeah that's just too nasty to think about so uh yeah it's a bit of a mini battle resignation there g3 look at these pawns now queen d5 it's just so dominating positionally crushing queen e4 yep and desperately rook takes a2 bishop takes a2 yeah the bishop drops back so this is all from the exchange French believe it or not b6 and now white resigns uh, so this game may seem hard to believe that stockfish can be outplayed from an exchange French but we'll see on the faster time controls and the higher IDs what happens in the official tournaments I think you may be in for a big surprise pretty soon in the next few days and weeks because there are some faster tournaments around with these higher IDs like 11250 so uh, enough of demo Leela this is the real Leela coming out here <laughs> and she can win from the exchange French it seems so that's pretty dangerous stuff to be able to win against Stockfish 9 from a symmetrical pawn structure situation constantly offering imbalanced situations and scenarios offering the bishop not taken offering structural damage with knight a6 not taken getting then later the bishop pair swapping a load of structural damage for a protected pass pawn reinforcing and emphasizing that pass pawn creating another pass pawn too much for white to juggle total overload reinforcing again with f3 white's just left without any counterplay completely dominated again comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much